Welcome back to Disera Media Literacy, the radio series that aims to educate and empower listeners to navigate the media landscape in a critical and informed way. In today's lesson, we will explore the different types of media that we encounter in our daily lives and the role of media in society. So what are the types of media? There are many different types of media that we encounter on a daily basis, including print, broadcast and online media. Print media includes newspapers, magazines, booklets, leaflets, billboards, posters and books. Broadcast media includes television and radio. Online media includes websites, social media and blogs. Social media includes interactive platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, WhatsApp, LinkedIn, TikTok, Tumblr, Reddit, YouTube, Pinterest, Flixer, Snapchat, Facebook Messenger, WeChat, Be Real and Hootsuite. So where are older adults inhabiting the online world? Contrary to general opinion, all the above sites are frequented by every age group, including older adults, but some are more popular than others. According to the Pew Research Centre, which has been studying social media usage for over 10 years, older demographics are on multiple platforms, but 62% of users over 65 years and 72% of 50 to 64 year olds use Facebook. Interestingly, many of these people don't share personal posts, but prefer to share media such as articles, photos and videos from other sources. They are also likely to share more often than younger demographics. Other platforms popular with older adults are WhatsApp, LinkedIn, YouTube and Pinterest. And what is the role of media in society? The role of media in society is multifaceted. On one hand, the media is a source of information, entertainment and education. On the other hand, the media is a powerful force that can shape public opinion and influence political decisions. The media can act as a watchdog, holding those in power accountable and giving a voice to the marginalised but it can just as easily be used as a tool of manipulation and disinformation, spreading misinformation and promoting certain interests over others. This rate and extent of the spread of inaccurate information over recent years means we are currently living through an infodemic. Gossip and hearsay are rapidly overtaking factual information from reliable sources leading to mistrust and confusion. Social media is interactive, connecting us with individuals and networks globally. The days of passing information over the garden wall are long gone. Now we can engage with online friends throughout the four corners of the world without ever leaving our chair. While the benefits of online interaction are multiple, it also poses threats through hoaxes, scams, bullying and manipulation for online users. So now I'm going to explain some media terms. I've just mentioned the words scams and hoaxes, words that are very familiar to those who are tech and internet savvy. But a lot of us are unclear as to what these terms mean. Never mind how to identify them. Let me give you a brief explanation of some of the online vocabulary that you might hear over the next few episodes. Firstly, a hoax. This is a news story or email that has been deliberately falsified to mislead the public. A story or email can be sensational, emotional and has a sense of urgency often warning of a computer virus and asking you to share the information with all of your friends, followers, or asking for money or bank account details. Phishing. 
This is using scams to get information such as bank account numbers, passwords and other personal details that can be used to rob your money or identity. Scamming. This can take the form of sending an email or messages that directs you to click a link that will infect your device or getting you to fill out quizzes or surveys to gather information on you for identity fraud or pretending to be a celebrity or even someone you know to get money from you. It also includes fake ads or news stories to get you to donate money. Many have been caught out by online dating scams whereby someone gains your trust then coerces you into sending the money or investing in a fake business. Bots. Bots or robots are automated programs developed to do many of the monotonous jobs that humans would have done in the past. You will come across these in many of the interactions you have on shopping and booking sites. They can be good or bad. We will provide more information in future episodes. Algorithms. An algorithm, simply put, is a set of instructions to perform a task, for example, a cake recipe. Algorithms in computing are inputting instructions to transform data into information that can be used by people, machines, or to inform other algorithms. There are different types of algorithms, but an example of a commonly used one is a search engine. If you search Google, its algorithm, PageRank, will decide quickly and efficiently which results to show and in what order based on hundreds of factors. Algorithms will send you suggestions and ads on social media platforms based on your previous online activity. Hacker. A hacker is someone with the skills to gain access to networks or computer systems. This is often unauthorised and done for the purpose of stealing data, changing or deleting information. Trolls. These are people who inhabit chat rooms, comment sections and any public online forum for the purpose of causing disruption, spreading hatred, untruths and panic. They target not only individuals, but also organisations, businesses and communities. So what are the perspectives and biases in media? As we consume different types of media, it's important to be aware of the different perspectives and biases that can be present. Media is created by people and people have different experiences and beliefs which can influence their reporting. Recognising these perspectives and biases can help us to better understand the information that we are consuming. With traditional media such as print media and television, it is often easy to ascertain the ideology of the media outlet, for example Fox News and CNN. Online media is more complex and is constantly developing and changing. Every interaction we have online is providing information that can create a profile of us and, more worryingly, shape who we are. What we see online is dictated by complex algorithms that profile and classify us based on our likes and searches. Advertising is then targeted and customised to give greater revenue to the social media company. This also means that we are viewing information that resonates with us and connecting with people who have similar views, which confirms our beliefs, whether they are based on fact or false information. Our next episode will look at the definitions of fake news, misinformation, disinformation, and malinformation and how and why it's distributed. Please tune in for the third episode of Disera Media Literacy. Thank you for listening to Disera Media Literacy. Remember to stay informed, stay curious and stay media literate.
we've looked today at sources and types of media. Um, as a matter of interest, what media platforms do you frequent, Fiona? Well, I'm on quite a few of them. You know, social media is kind of my business because I do social media training. Um, so I have to try them all out. But uh, the main ones I would use would be Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn and X, formerly known as Twitter. And have you a favourite amongst them? They do differ. I think I like them for different reasons. You know, I, I put a lot of personal stuff on Facebook, which I wouldn't put on the other platforms. Uh, Instagram's very visual oriented, whereas Twitter is very text oriented. Twitter, I would, because I'm in the news business, I like to use X or Twitter uh, as a as a great source of information. I like to see what people are saying uh, and get the very up to date information. Mm. So they tend to have different functions and I like on LinkedIn, I would use it as a very professional network yeah. and I would never post anything personal on that. So I like them for different reasons. Yeah. Mm. What about yourself? Yeah. I suppose Facebook too, but to a very limited extent. And uh, I've got to be a bit of a Twitter addict, actually, <laughs> uh, since the Ukraine war uh, erupted and uh, it's provided up to date information. Now, I've I've you know I've had a crash course in how to you know, manage social media because there's a lot of nonsense uh, out there. There's a lot of aggression, particularly on Twitter, but there's a lot of good information as well. That's very timely and comes from very respected sources if you can if you can verify them and if, if you know who they are. So, you know, I, I, Timothy Snyder is the Yale professor of history. Uh, you know, that's a good source. I'm not you know, it's not he's not a bot. I know that he's real and I'm getting the up to date um, thoughts from him on uh, the, the the Russian invasion of, of Ukraine. Uh, so uh, it's good. Um, I, uh, it's a bit addictive. I am, you know, I have to be aware. I'm aware of that and I'm uh, I'm trying to, to try to manage it. But uh, it's not just that it's social media. It's what's going on at the moment is addictive as well. Exactly. Uh, like it's very compelling and uh, and there's more and more uh, stuff going on that I really want to be on top of and I want to know quite quickly what's what's happening and I want to have the most informed uh, sources so you know for an old newspaper guy it's hard to admit it but it is it is a valuable source of information it's interesting you mentioned about your the, you know you you an academic source is usually quite a reliable source is there anybody anything else that people would look for um if they're following somebody um you know like what their background, anything about their background that you'd advise people to look at. Yeah, yeah you can prune your uh, sources. And I think this is the crucial thing with social media. Just block, block anybody who's coming out with, you know, racist stuff, aggressive stuff, non-objective stuff, silly stuff. Uh, you, you get a prune. You know, it is good. The algorithm is good at, at uh, pruning and, and giving you what you it thinks that you want now also the downside to that yeah. of course is that you're in a an echo chamber and you're only getting information right. yeah. <laughs> from one side yeah so that's that's something uh, to be aware of but but you know i'm in in my case i'm interested in world events at the moment i want you know highly respected sources and i don't want any um sort of nonsense and i don't want certainly want to eliminate bots but it's, it's hard to get rid of them. Twitter isn't doesn't seem to be able to do that. There is still a lot. Um, but I still get valuable. It's still it still is a valuable uh, source of information. Can I ask um, well, Declan, I'll come to you first. And then I yeah, well, well I, I think, you know, uh, a lot of my generation, Facebook would have been the staple. Um, uh, but I kind of missed, I skipped over Instagram <laughs> and uh, I never, I, you know, I never quite did Twitter. And um, when I moved back into social media was when I was trying to work with our organisation, URAF, to get Gen Z, you know, the, the kind of under 20, you know, that uh, who are not on Facebook. You know, uh, and a lot of our European projects and things were, um, you know, shouting out all across Facebook. But I was like, is it actually reaching that whole demographic? And TikTok is that digital street corner where they hang out. So um, I, I dived into the world of TikTok. And um, uh, so I, I now have 16,000 followers on TikTok um, and I know how to do all sorts of body popping and <laughs> there's, 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 a, there's a fun element. But um, but I, I've just even seen that 
change radically. Uh, at, at the start, it was just this very fun platform. Um, and now that has all the politicians are on there and all of the same players that are elsewhere um, are on there. So um, but f- uh, so TikTok and Facebook, Facebook rather, will be um, the, the two places that I have accounts everywhere else. Yeah. Um, but I don't I don't really use them uh, too much. You know? It is interesting how um, these social me- media platforms are changing over time, because I remember certain platforms that were very um, prominent are now you never really hear about them. And also I'm constantly told Facebook is for older people, you know, so, you, you know, as soon as you mention Facebook, it's like, aha, you know. Um, can I ask you, um, do you have your pro- um, your pages on private or have you got them um, so that, you know, anyone can see yeah, your feeds? Well, that's a great question because, I mean, I would use it for uh, business development, usually brand development to engage with people about business topics. I don't tend to post a lot of personal stuff on Facebook a little bit, but only very, 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 very contained way. But on Twitter now, there is talk that they're going to eliminate the block button so you will not be able to block somebody. And that allows trolls to access you. And they currently also can't seem to stop anyone mentioning you. So I I think there are big, big, big risks. So, you know, every now and then I I sometimes put my Twitter profile to private. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the idea of social media is to connect with people and engage with people and share content and see other people's content. And that's limited if you have your profile set to private. Yeah, I, I tried, you know, because I agonised over this. I, I wanted to reach out to an audience um, for my professional work across Facebook. And yet I also wanted privacy. So I set up a personal profile and then I set up a page. Um, and in theory, that was great, but it just really didn't work because um, you, you, you kind of, you have to, you have to feed your profiles to to kind of keep them ticking over um and it's just a lot of work and then there's a crossover and you're you don't know where to post it here and one one's flagging and then people are confused because they're trying to follow you but then you've two profiles so i don't recommend it um uh i don't know what the answer is um mm. i don't really have an awful lot that i keep private <laughs> I'm not that kind of person, so it's less of a problem for me. I, I just throw it all out there anyway. But um, if I were um, a, a kind of a more private person, I think I'd I'd be in an agony over it. Yeah. And I, about or how about yourself? Um, I I realised after years on Facebook, this is going back to the noughties, early noughties, that I had. But my I left my phone number on my public profile, and I was getting all these calls from scammers. Um, so I, I just, I mean, I'm a journalist. I should know not to do that, but I, I had done that. So I tried to keep Facebook private and Twitter is is like for keeping, is a, is a public thing. It's, uh, I, I want to get information and, uh, and and keep on top of the news. So that's that's more more public. Um, but it's, it's really important for people to be aware of the privacy settings. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you can work that quite well for your for yourself. And with, like with Facebook, just keep it private if you want. And Facebook is a kinder uh, space, uh, especially for for older people or for all people. Yeah. Like you're not going to get mm. lambasted on Facebook the way you do on Twitter. And it's it's vicious. It can be vicious at times. And you have to be it's almost like you're it's almost like, you know, water of duck back because it's so expected <laughs> nobody you know you don't turn a hair but if you got lambasted in that way yeah in yeah. the street or whatever I, I think that's what's happening in in society at the moment where you see people became aggressive on uh, digitally without seeing another person's face yeah. because it's much easier to do that and then the, uh, 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 because it was easy to and then they've now transferred it into the real yeah. world now they're doing it in reality yeah. Mm-hmm. I, 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 it reminds me of the the driver. You know, you you have these people in their cars and they're screaming and shouting because they feel protected by their car. It's that same mentality now. In as you said, in that digital space where where people were behind their screens, you know, um, and and uh, yeah, I, th- I think that that has led to a, a whole different different level, you know. And um, I think also the the democratization of so of social media um, ha- has has meant that. That, um, you know, you have people doing certain things, um, saying certain things, behaving certain ways, and then all of a sudden there's a reaction, which, um, 
you know, might be might be positive, you know. So all of a sudden you have the, the tail wagging the dog and you've got you've got um, behavioral changes uh, driven by the reaction of people. So so all of a sudden, yeah, like shouting at this in this way. I, I, re- I remember those programs on TV where you had very, very, very um, uh, broken families put on TV and you had some guy and they had bounces around waiting for the inevitable fight that happened and it was compelling viewing you know so you had you had these poor people brought out and their their very di- this you know dysfunctional lives put out onto the table and then everyone's temper gets up and then they all go and start kind of beat and they pull them off and it's everyone's watching you know and it's it's uh, you're getting that now in social media it's 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 uh, as you say it's become normalized you know uh, there's it's it's an arena you know and there's different different i suppose uh, languages is the wrong word but um different um codes of practice uh, n- not written anywhere but just different ways that people behave on different uh, social media platforms yeah. mm. and i think it's very important to remember that there are responsibilities that coming with having a tool like social media to to broadcast information to connect to influence people's thinking and Trying to avoid pitfalls is one of one of the most important things on it. And Bill is right about privacy settings. And my my set, my Facebook is set to private mm-hmm. uh, in contrast to the other ones. But one of the other things that people do make a mistake, as well as perhaps not learning about their privacy settings, which is a huge pitfall for people, but also people. Um, I've seen occasionally people using their their business account for personal views. Uh-huh. And there can be a lot of controversial issues that you can have opinions about and you can have discussions with your friends about, but it's not appropriate to put those on your business account. And I've seen businesses getting into terrible trouble when this happens. I wonder who that would be. There might be so much perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> That's one. That's one. <laughs> I, I, I think, um, you know, I think especially we're talking about elderly people and um, I think there are, you know, there are a lot of people who when social media first raised its head where like oh, I'm not having any any anything to do with that but there's a sense that you're you're if you're not digitally literate now um you're not literate really you're, the conversation is now so embedded on the web and across social media that you you are you are marginalized and excluded if you're not part of it mm-hmm. so so you you ha- and and that that's that's also with businesses you know so you have a you have a plumber you know um and all of a sudden you know um the word of mouth isn't working anymore because somebody's tweeting in a whatsapp group or whatever so you have people um feeling that they have to get involved but not informed on how they're not they're not familiar with it um, and that leads to all sorts of um you know it's funny funny for people who are looking in and, and and seeing stuff but not funny for the person who's trying to get to grips with how to bring their business online uh, or how to bring their personal life online or you know so it is it is um it is a real challenge i think especially for I, and i'm i'm saying elderly you know elderly people um like me <laughs> uh, there are a lot of elderly people who are really tech savvy of yeah. course oh, yeah. but um but if you look at the demographics there are a lot of people mm. um you know and and we're we're a very interesting generation really because we we are of a, a time when this wasn't a thing. It just didn't exist. Mm-hmm. Like the internet didn't exist. Like w- we have one foot in a whole new world yeah. and one foot in a in a world that's been left behind. So we're we're a, we're a very very interesting um, generation. But it's 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 the, the it's the people who have more of a foot in the last world. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's very difficult for them to 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 shift mm-hmm. their weight. Yeah. I know um, personally I have mine um, on private and I've also and it's something maybe listeners should think of. Um, I would very much have used um, my social media to connect with friends who've moved abroad and family or living abroad. And I have um, two do- darling grandchildren um, that I have had been posting pictures of until I was told absolutely no way should I be posting pictures of um, children online. Um, And this is something that I hadn't thought deeply about. Now, even though I had it on private and I think there was there is some protection in having it on private. But I think a lot of people, you know, grandparents and older people, they use it, you know, to connect and communicate with family. And it's a, a lovely way of sharing experiences and um, sharing your, your life, you know, 
by putting up pictures, but I suppose it's something to be wary of, but and at least getting permission from the parents um, or the, you know, whether they can push um, photos up and also thinking about the child themselves that in future years, um, will they have wanted their picture yeah. to be up and are you opening them up to compromising situations, you know? Yeah. Will they sue you? Will they sue you? <laughs> exactly. I, had, uh, I, know, I know we're getting to the end of the, the session, but I had a fright uh, this morning because I was on my phone and uh, I went in, there was an update and I went into my photo album and I have maybe 2,000 photographs in there and um, it showed photographs of different people and said you know unidentified do you want and I'm like well that's me you know so I tapped on my own face and it went through my 2,000 photographs and it unerringly picked every photograph that I was in um, and some I had like floppy some summer, summer hats and glasses on some I was like just an obscure half a face but it knew it could it could spot me in a second in every photograph um, and that's now like right across the web like any photograph that you're in it can just identify right. you you know it's frightening it is um, just before we finish up can I ask um, how accurately do people present themselves on <laughs> social media I know this could be just, just before talk. just before we finish <laughs> up for a long time about this but um, it, Fiona have you any well I think people who are using social media need to question and, and just assess for themselves how people are presenting themselves and not take it as absolute truth. So a lot of people would only present their successes or their holidays or all the happy events in their life. So it makes them look like they have the most happy life ever, the most successful career ever and nothing ever goes wrong. And everybody else is reading that going, oh, my life isn't that good. I'm not that happy, you know, and it <laughs> makes them feel bad about themselves. So it's just for social media users to be aware what you're seeing is not always the truth. People are selective about what they're presenting and that whatever that they present is, is portraying one part of their image, one painting one aspect without portraying the whole truth. And, yeah. and if I could finish it on a quick a anecdote, I was on a, a, a Zoom meeting um, and, uh, you know, there was a, a very nicely presented lady with, you know, uh, her makeup was flawless and uh, she was she was talking and then she she reached over to get something and her makeup stayed there. <laughs> And her face, so it was literally a filter and like she had lips and mascara just on its own, like the Cheshire cat. And she got and then she came back into her face again. So, yeah, you're, you're definitely not seeing everything. Think, that, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Um, and I look forward to talking to you again next time. Thank you. Thank you. Laura.